What's up, YouTube? Derbador Weldor here, coming at you with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the crane I built, as you saw in the thumbnail of this, of course. It's a freaking crane. So, why did I decide to make this crane? Well, first of all, I mean, you're going to be a welder and you're doing repair work. You're going to actually, you're going to have to eventually suck it up and either buy a crane or build a crane or something for lifting. I used to have an auto crane on this truck actually, but it was a 110 volt auto crane and it was riddled with problems. It was constantly breaking. And if you own an auto crane, you know every time an auto crane breaks, it's a thousand bucks. Just be prepared, you're running it and it goes click that day. Be prepared to fork out a thousand bucks but there are ways around owning an auto crane or you know that style of crane you know the crane with the boom that swings around and everything's all remote control when i say an auto crane that's what i'm talking about your service type crane that's what i'm saying when i say auto crane all right because i know this is a boom crane and some auto cranes are actually technically a boom crane but this one is kind of unique and i'll explain it here to you so this is our gin pole crane or boom crane or whatever you want to call it right there are a hundred things we can call this thing it's a gin pole crane no it's technically a boom crane because it's a single boom it does it's not four points or it's a three point gin pole crane or whatever you want to call it it's a lifting mechanism that only cost me 350 bucks to build and build very, very nice. So we'll talk about the concept of this crane. It's not entirely rocket science. You don't need an engineering degree for it. These are very simple. This one in particular is very simple. It is basically a gem hole crane. You have, this one is a, is a, three, is a three point. So you have your main pole here on a pivot point, right? And then it tilts back and these chains catch it. So these chains is what's bearing all of the weight on it. And of course, this is pulling back like so, which later after looking at this, I think I'm probably going to make some gusseting members that come out like so and out at an angle like that just to reinforce that area but that's still some pretty stout plate i have no plans of lifting anything over a thousand pounds with this so that's probably good as it is but probably good with a lifting mechanism is not where you want is not something you want to be saying probably good and cranes don't go together it needs to be you are sure it's good. on here since i said i'm only planning on lifting a thousand pounds I have a 2,500 pound um, ATV winch. I know these are not meant for overhead loads. I understand that. That's why I have one that's double the capacity of what I'm planning on lifting. And I tried to keep it pretty simple without, you know, having a hundred ways the cable's going. So this is just bolted to the plate that came with it. That plate is welded to the beam and the cable goes up and there. And when you're driving to keep the thing from flailing around all over the place, I chain it in down here on the trailer safety chain hook. I see I got my little Anderson connectors that come off the solenoid pack, which go to the winch, which go to the winch. So when if I want to take this off the truck, I can unplug and unhook it, unhook the chains, pull it down, pull the pin out, pull the boom off as one whole unit unbolt the four bolts that plates on boom whole thing comes off super super simple very difficult to do that and this can be done by one person i set this whole thing up where one person can take this set this thing up and take it down try doing that with an auto crane
Now, to be honest, I haven't had much of a chance to test this thing out before I made this video. I lifted my small utility trailer, as you saw, which is a probably about four or 500 pounds, and there was no stress whatsoever on this crane. It didn't bow, it didn't buckle, the winch had no problem lifting it. It was just absolutely perfect, the whole way this thing is built here. So I have a feeling it's definitely good for a thousand pounds, especially with that heavy I-beam. That I-beam is definitely more than enough. And that chain over there, that chain, each chain is rated for about 3,800-ish pounds, something around that. And they have two chains set up there. Now the weakest point on the whole thing is the pulley up there. The pulley is rated at 2,000 pounds, which I think I'm probably going to go get a bigger one. I think I want to go spend the extra money on the next step up make a slightly bigger hole up there, put the larger pulley in there that's rated for 4,000 pounds, just because, like I said, it's a lifting mechanism and probably good is not how you want to be with it. You definitely want to be 100% sure it is good. And if you say, I want to lift 1,000 pounds, you need to be building your stuff for 3,000 pounds, at least. You need to be looking, say, I want to lift 1,000 pounds. Every component you get, you should be buying 3,000 pound rated. Because you may need, you may lift 2,000 pounds. Because what's going to happen is they're like, oh, it's only 1,000 pounds. You go clip hook up to it and everything. And you start lifting. And holy crap, that thing's actually 1,500 or 2,000 pounds and not 1,000 pounds like you were promised. So that's why I believe in completely overbuilding lifting components as much as possible. And you see what's super cool about the spacing in here. The way I have everything spaced out is I can still put my floor jack, my gas can... And right here, I got a space just for my cooler right there. I put a little piece of angle right there under the 200 just to keep the freaking cooler from sliding up and smacking into something up there on the 200. But I can still fit everything I need to in the bed, in the bed part of the truck, and have the crane set up. So it's proving to be a really good setup. All right, so the remote. Got the remote sitting right here. And I got to get a longer cable for this remote. But this is, you know, the little cheesy ATV remote they send with it. And we pull everything out. Kind of do this one-handed. I had to wrap these in electrical tape because for whatever stupid reason... It arcs off of the truck. I don't know if there's a bad ground or this is not the right grounding polarity or what. But this will, just like that, arc off the truck. It's really strange. I don't quite understand that because I took it all apart and nothing's touching the metal casing. So I'm a little concerned about that. But... Y'all let me know if you got any ideas of stuff I may have missed on that. But we plug this in here. I can't do it one-handed with the phone. But we plug this in here. Then we have the ignition switch. For whatever reason, it has an ignition off switch. So I just made a plug right here to the positive. And all that does when you plug that in is tell the remote, yes, ignition's on. You're cool to run. All right. So simple in, out. We'll hit out. Yes, I painted the cable when I painted the boom. I was too lazy. I did not feel like taking the entire thing apart just to paint it. I said, screw it. And go, dropping the remote. All right. Eventually, I'm going to paint the tip of that orange. There we go. Do, 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 do. Genius. It's so simple. And then when we had to go back down, we pushed the down button. Oh my God. Oh crap, there's no weight on it. Dang it. <laughs> I'll get a big old bird's nest in that winch if I ain't careful. <laughs> I set this up. I actually do have a dedicated clip for this. So if I'm hauling a trailer, I actually have a dedicated clip just to put that on to lock it down while traveling. So I got the trailer hooked up, and I need those two hooks there for the trailer safety chains. I can do that. Now, what I do, pull it in. I just get a 
hair tension on it. You don't want too much. Just about like that. Just to keep it from going all over the place. There we go, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't get any cool footage of me lifting a whole bunch of stuff with it. But it's simple. It's almost free. I mean, when you consider the price, 350 bucks for a new crane, which is what I got, 350 bucks for a new crane, it is lacking a few features. I get it. It doesn't articulate and move and go here and there and go up, down, left, right, and all this other stuff. But it is a lifesaver. You've got to have some kind of lifting mechanism eventually because you cannot sit there and lift implements and components and stuff by hand for the rest of your life we will destroy your back and i really need this because every other welder's got one noah's got one zeus has got one russ has a crane my old instructor alan's got one who else has one randy has one somewhere everybody's got a freaking crane except for me and i the reason i decided to build this was because I had a job where it would have been really nice to have a crane and me and a couple dudes just basically yeeted the tractor um, mower boom back up there and welded it. And I woke up the next day like, ooh, that was a bad idea. So I built this because it you don't need much for it. I just could have backed the truck up to it, lifted it up, and then just swung it up into place with this right doesn't need to be a super articulating auto crane to do something simple like that and it'll save your back so thank you guys for watching this video if you like this video please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and y'all have a fantastic day